Hey there, CSS friends! Before a character can move, it needs bones, HTML bones. Today, we are diving into the heart of CSS character animation, the skeleton. If you don't get what's happening here, find previous videos in the description below. Let's get moving! Before your CSS character can walk, jump, or dance, they need a proper skeleton, just like any other real creature. Think of an artist dummy. It has joints that let you pose it. That's what we're building in HTML. Without a proper HTML skeleton, animating even a simple move becomes painful. You'll be manually transforming every tiny element and questioning your life choices. Take the chicken we created earlier. If I wanted to jump, I have to animate each part separately. Now imagine doing that for a complex move. It's not just copy-pasting keyframes. You'll need to sync and connect every element frame by frame. A good HTML skeleton saves time and makes animations way more fun. Let's break down our chicken structure. Start from the body. Then nest all the connected parts like joints in real anatomy. For example, if we create a body element, we should nest neck, shoulders, and legs inside the body element. Then inside the neck element, we should put hat. Inside the hat, we should place face features. Inside the shoulder any element, we should place elbow. Inside the elbow, we should place hand. Inside the hand fingers, inside fingers, nails. Each moving part is nested inside the one it's attached to. Want to add a hat? Nest it inside the hat element. A sword? Stick it to the hand element. Your HTML is your skeleton. Now, how do these body parts know where to rotate from? With transform origin. This is an anchor point for any transformation in CSS. By default, it's in the center of the element, but we need to move it in the center of a joint. If your character has smooth and realistic shapes, joints will be circle, and the transform origin point should be placed in the center of this circle. Move the origin to where the joint would be in real life. Two connected parts should be overlapped to create this circle shape, and this is our joint. If your character is cubic, joints will be points. Place them the way your character doesn't look injured. It could be the center of the cube or at center of uh, one of the edges. When you work with joints, always run a simple repeating animation to see that everything is fine and your character doesn't need an emergency. Here's the cool part. When you nest joints correctly, you only have to animate one thing. If you rotate the shoulder, the entire arm moves. If you don't nest, you're stuck micromanaging every angle on every frame. It's a nightmare. CSS animation doesn't have to be hard, just smart. Want a spaghetti moment? Here's the trick. Create more joints for each body part. I did it for a mosquito nose. It consists of a few joints connecting small nose parts. Nest them and place their transform origins like a normal character. And suddenly, you've got a sausage-shaped nose that bends like it's made of rubber. You can apply this trick not only for 2D characters, but also for 3D characters. Let's watch our chicken moves. Same thing we can do with Mario or any other creature. Looks pretty good, right? You can play with these demos in the text version of this episode. So remember, 
Nest your elements by anatomy. Set transform origin like real joints. And uh, use structure to simplify your animation. That's the skeleton in a nutshell. This is a part of a bigger series of built-in 3D characters with pure CSS. If you like this, hit that like button, subscribe, and tell me what should we animate in the next episode. See you soon. Bye.